I've been a truck driver for over 20 years, and believe me, I've seen all kinds of things during that time. Some bizarre and unexplainable things. I've maybe even seen a ghost, but who knows. But believe it or not, the scariest thing I've seen, the most dangerous thing I've seen, was a person. It was a Thursday night. I had just finished and was coming back from a long 12-hour delivery trip, about ready to log my hours and call it a night. I was returning home, but to tell you the truth, being on the road for several hours had made me pretty hungry. I turned off at the next exit and stopped for a quick bite to eat at a random small hotel on the highway that, surprisingly, had a restaurant inside. As I walked in, I noticed the place was empty, and I could tell it only recently opened. Even so, it was quite luxurious, and that caught my attention. I ordered and ate a quick meal and was ready to leave, but soon had a problem. My truck wouldn't start. I made every effort to get the engine to turn over, but it was useless. Fortunately, the owner of the hotel came out and offered me a room to spend the night there for free, which I accepted. I have to admit that the room was quite nice and the staff were really friendly. After calling my wife and telling her that I was going to be at least another day before I could come home, I laid down on the bed, closed my eyes, and tried to relax. I don't know how much time had passed, but I fell asleep pretty quickly. Later that night, a strange noise woke me up. It was coming from right outside the door. I got up to see what was going on when I detected a strange odor that was vaguely familiar. I went back to the bed to grab my cell phone to call the hotel owner, but when I was about to dial, suddenly a hand came out from underneath the bed and grabbed my foot, knocking me to the floor. From my view on the floor, I peered under the bed and screamed in terror. Two terrifying blood-red eyes were staring back at me from under the bed. I moved my foot away and scrambled backwards. Suddenly, I heard a noise coming from the air ducts. Something was moving through it. From a small opening, I could see something slowly crawling out. It was a whispery black figure with a distorted and deformed face. It stared right at me, I was trembling with anticipation. The face started to open its mouth, and I saw its hideous tongue dripping with saliva. Once the being finished coming out of the duct, it slowly started to walk toward me. I tried to run, but my body was paralyzed with fear. What was happening to me? Screaming wasn't an option either. It was as if my body had just stopped functioning. The being stepped in front of me and started to put its ghastly long finger in my mouth. It was going deeper and deeper and applying more force on my throat until I could barely breathe. The pain grew worse. I felt like this dark figure was going to break my jaw and tear me apart inside. My heart began to beat faster, and in what I thought would be my last seconds alive, I saw something that totally disconcerted me. I dropped my cell phone on the floor next to me, and in the reflection of the screen, I could only see myself, alone. In the screen's reflection, there was no demon, no finger, nothing. I turned my head and looked straight ahead. I was alone. Slowly my body started to move and I stood up. I noticed that the monster was still staring at me from the door. I quickly grabbed my cell phone and with the camera on pointed it at him. Again, there was nothing. My senses began to sharpen and I discovered something I hadn't noticed. A strange noise coming from behind me. When I turned around... I noticed a small pipe coming out of the wall with gas leaking out of it. Was that the strange odor I smelled before coming in there? I got up and attempted to ram the door with all my strength until it finally broke. I desperately ran to my truck and parked outside. It still wouldn't start. I was about to take off on foot and run as fast as possible but came to a sudden realization. The strange odor that I had smelled in the room... That smell had become very familiar to me. I got out of the truck, opened the hood, and checked the truck's engine. At that moment, I understood everything that happened. I called a coworker buddy who was only a few hours away and gave him directions to come and pick me up. When he arrived, I just simply explained that my truck had broken down and said nothing else. He dropped me off as close to my house as he could. 
When I was fully recovered and able to pull myself together, I decided to go back to the hotel to retrieve my truck. I went with several of my friends and pretended as if nothing had happened. The hotel owner said he managed to get a mechanic out to fix up my engine rather quickly, but the whole time I was there, he kept looking at me suspiciously. I thanked him for fixing my truck. As I was leaving, I explained to my friends everything that had happened, but told them not to ever tell anyone else. You see, I didn't actually see any monsters or demons in my hotel room that night. The gas coming out of that pipe in the room was nitrous oxide, a slow hallucinogen with a very faint but distinct scent. A scent that I could still recognize after growing up spending hours in my dad's dental office as a kid. And what happened to my truck was not an accident. Someone had cut some of the wires and intentionally sabotaged it. All of this, and the reaction of the hotel owner, helped me understand that there was nothing paranormal going on at the hotel at all. Just a deranged owner of a new hotel trying to generate some buzz and promote his hotel as somehow haunted. The owner saw me as nothing more than marketing. Someone who spent a strange night at a possibly haunted luxury hotel in the middle of nowhere would definitely go tell other people about it, right? To be honest, I don't know if that worked, since this story will always be a fairy tale in my mind. I never gave that demented hotel owner the pleasure of spreading the news about his hotel, not until years later. I just kept doing what I do best, driving my truck nonstop. I only told my story to a few trusted people, that is, until now, to warn them about stopping at any fancy hotels on the side of the highway. Like I said, sometimes people are the most dangerous things around. My name is Thomas. When I tell people that I used to be a truck driver, they always ask me what stories I could tell them or what was the weirdest thing I ever experienced. I always laugh and tell them I don't have many stories to tell. I only have one, but that one story was enough to make me quit my job. It was a late Sunday night. Most families were at home enjoying time with each other. I should have been with my wife and daughter too, but my job didn't allow it as I was on assignment to drive a delivery truck on an almost deserted road all night long across several states on a long-distance delivery. I'd been driving and staring at nothing but the cold, lonely road for several hours, trying not to fall asleep. I was getting very sleepy and felt my eyelids start to droop. Even though there were no cars on the road nearby, it was still really unsafe to keep driving in that condition. I tried not to relax, but sleepiness began to overcome me and suddenly I closed my eyes for a moment. When I opened them, the lights of my truck illuminated a girl in the middle of the road that I was about to hit. I quickly swerved my truck to avoid her, but I wasn't sure if I'd succeeded. I slammed on the brakes and eventually got stopped. I got out praying I hadn't hit the little girl. I began to inspect the area and luckily I didn't see any blood or bodies, so that was a good sign. With a sigh of relief that wouldn't last long, I scanned the area and to my astonishment, there was no one. The road on this part of the route was pretty empty. There was nothing but a barren landscape for miles. There were several light poles around, shining light around the area, so it was hard to believe that I had lost sight of the girl. There was simply no one. For a moment I thought I was crazy, like maybe I had slept too little or that I had been hallucinating. I walked back toward the truck, but something caught my attention. From further back, I could see the lights of the truck shining on someone. It was the silhouette of a girl. Against the foggy image, I noticed she had a red bow in her hair. I ran toward the light, but again, there was no one there. I looked under the truck and there was nothing there either. The whole situation started to scare me, so I decided it was time to leave. When I got into the truck, I was ready to start the engine, but I couldn't find the keys. They weren't in my pocket, and they weren't in the truck either. I looked down on the floor, maybe they had fallen, but they weren't there either. I looked up again, and that's when I found them. The keys were on the outside of the front hood of the truck, but there was something else. I glanced to the side, 
saw her again. A pair of dark eyes staring right at me from outside the truck. The girl with the red bow. I got out of the truck so fast I nearly fell flat on the pavement and started running. I don't know where I was going and I couldn't get far enough away from that truck. I know what I did was illogical, but I was terrified. At that moment, all logic flew out the window, because while I ran as fast as I could, the truck suddenly turned on by itself and accelerated towards me. I tried to get out of its path, but my body couldn't react. I was paralyzed. All I could do was watch as the lights got closer and closer to me, and my truck was just about ready to run me over. A few seconds later, my eyes opened. I was inside the truck, off the road. I had fallen asleep. Was it all just a nightmare? I started up the truck and continued on my way, extremely confused and a little scared. I didn't realize it at the time, but soon after I found a red ribbon where the cargo was. The same ribbon that the girl I thought I had run over had. I didn't question what I had seen and dismissed all possibilities that it was all just a big coincidence. My daughter never rode in my truck, nor did she have a bow like that. Today I'm sure that what I saw was real, and you know what? This was my first and last story ever as a truck driver. I used to be a truck driver, so I have my share of strange stories that I've seen on the road. But one of them stands out from the rest because that was the only time I ever doubted my own sanity. Being on the road alone, I take all precautions to protect myself. But how do you protect yourself from going crazy? There really isn't anything you can do when it's your own mind that's being attacked. At least, that's what I thought happened. That day I was in the middle of a regular shift driving my truck nothing out of the ordinary. A huge traffic delay on the highway caused me to run a little late for my destination, so I was going a lot faster than usual. Unfortunately, I was going to be late even at the speed I was going. I had to find some way to get there faster, but how? While I was asking myself this question, my GPS suggested I take a route I'd never noticed before. I refreshed the GPS and re-entered my destination just to make sure it wasn't a glitch, and again, it confirmed the new route was much more direct and would get me there almost 20 minutes faster. How come I'd never noticed it? The road I was supposed to turn on was just coming up, so I quickly turned onto the road and continued my journey, now a little slower and calmer, thinking I'd get there pretty fast. I looked off to the side of this unfamiliar road as I drove. The area looked pretty desolate, but there were several small houses that looked eerily similar to one another with the same brown roof every several hundred yards. I kept on driving, but I began to get a strange feeling that I had just been in this same place before. And strangely, the route seemed longer than I imagined. As I looked off to the side again, the same similar-looking houses kept appearing. I slowed down just a bit to take a closer look and made a startling realization. The houses weren't just very similar to each other, they were the exact same house over and over again. I took a closer look around and that's when I realized not only was the house the same, everything else around was the same as well. From the plants, the road signs, everything. How was this possible? I checked the GPS again, but strangely, there was no signal in the area, like someone had just mysteriously turned it off. Nothing was making any sense. Maybe I'd driven too long and was just hallucinating. I decided to stop the truck and pull over and step out to get a better look. As I walked around, I realized that no matter which direction I turned, the same scene kept endlessly repeating itself. With no GPS signal or even cell service to go off of, I began to question my own sanity. I reluctantly got back into my truck and continued driving hoping to find some sort of exit from this strange place. The feeling of deja vu just got worse. My surroundings became even more disorienting. I couldn't shake the sensation that I was caught in a never-ending loop. After about 20 minutes of driving, I noticed a faint glow in the distance. As I approached it, 
I realized it was a gas station. Relieved, I pulled over and entered the station for a much-needed break. Inside, I grabbed some snacks and a coffee and headed to the counter to pay. The attendant gave me an acknowledging nod and said, We don't get too many folks driving through this way too much. What brings you by? I told him about how my GPS led me off the main highway but then inexplicably shut off and got me stuck in a seemingly endless loop of highway for the last 30 minutes. He chuckled, shook his head, and muttered, Sounds about right. You must have gotten caught in dead man's loop. The county's been lagging on fixing those exit signs for a few weeks now. Four or five other guys in here with the same story in just the past few days. He explained that without the signs, drivers would get caught driving around this road called Dead Man's Loop that was a peculiar figure eight pattern, unknowingly seeing the same landmarks over and over again. I was relieved at the attendant's explanation. What he said next made my blood curl. Probably for the better that you got caught up in that versus what happened on the highway earlier today, as he explained that there had been a major traffic accident that involved more than 10 vehicles and had killed 20 people on that highway I somehow avoided. He looked at me strangely and grinned, something didn't want you on that highway today. I shook my head in bewilderment, realizing I could have easily been in that accident. The attendant then gave me directions on how to get back onto the highway and to my destination. I paid for my stuff, thanked him, and left the store. Getting back into my truck, I activated my GPS. Of course, the signal that was missing now turned on. I looked on the screen to see where I was and I was so perplexed. It showed I was only a mile away from my final delivery destination. Even stranger, there was no sign of any shortcut anywhere on the map at all just the original route through the main highway. As I started up my truck engine, I took a final glance back at the old gas station and saw nothing. There was no sign that there ever was a gas station nearby at all, like it had just disappeared. I knew it had been a long night, but was my mind playing tricks on me? Had I imagined everything? Even so, the gravity of everything that happened that day weighed on my mind as I realized how I narrowly missed a possible date with death on the road that day. No one ever believed the story I told them, and I never saw that shortcut through Dead Man's Loop or that gas station ever again on my GPS. It was as if I'd been trapped in another dimension, a dimension that for some reason didn't want me dead yet and allowed me to return to my reality.